What you're talking about there really brings me to a big question that I'm dealing with in, in the work I'm doing now, which is progress. You know, like we're talking about the Mongols did good things, so did the Nazis, so did, you know, whatever, settling the Wild West and killing all the Indians and et cetera, et cetera. But we're seeing those things as good largely because they contributed to where we are now. But is there anything inherent in where we are now that's necessarily good? In other words, do you believe in progress? Is Are we progressing as a species or, or is it more of a cyclical thing, as the Buddhists would say? This may be an eye of the beholder sort of question. Um, I, I'm going to suggest that, yes, if you're talking about progress in terms of the ability of more people to live their life to the fullest, however they deem that, um, then I think that there's no question that more people have more of an impact and more choices. I mean, we're you know there are people who live in what we used to call the third world that are just as isolated from opportunity as people were in the past. But I would suggest that in the past, those numbers were infinitely higher as a percentage. You know, I mean, when you read history books, as the great science historian James Burke told me once, you're reading the top zero 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 one percent of people who had the ability to go to school or get any literacy or make any difference. And and what we've done as as a species over time is increase the pool of people who get to share in the glory that used to be even a smaller percentage. It's still a small percentage, I think, if you take it on a global level, but it is an ever-increasing um, percentage. Now, what fascinates me is that, you know, if you look at the past, it tends to have an almost bunny hop sort of rhythm to what we would call progress, you know, two steps forward, one step back. If we were looking at civilization like a stock market, I think you could say that we've been on an, a, a constant uptick since the Renaissance without any real downturns. Does that mean that it's a little like trying to start a cigarette lighter in the first couple of tries, you just get a spark and it doesn't start. And, you know, one spark that doesn't start represents the Bronze Age and then that falls and then another spark starts and that represents. And now we finally got the flame lit. Or are we just so far from the last time we took any steps back that we don't remember that that's a, a, a standard thing that we're going to see again? I don't have an answer to that, but I'm fascinated by the idea of society maybe taking a step back again someday. Imagine not understanding or not being as, as advanced technologically as your great-great-great-grandparents, for example. Well, we're, we're in a moment now where we're seeing a step back in terms of quality of life and uh, uh, certainly in the United States in terms of uh, uh, retirement security, you know, uh, income disparity, uh, all these sorts of measures of of progress that we've looked at in the 20th century, since World War II at least, that uh, were increasing into the 70s and the 80s. A lot of them are now receding. Uh, even, uh, you know, expected um, lifespan is is uh, starting to edge downward. So again, as you say, it's it's an eye of the beholder kind of thing. As you were you were talking about this uptick since the Renaissance, I was thinking, um, that's that's kind of seen from a European perspective. I'm sure that's accurate, but seen from many other parts of the planet, that's probably not so accurate. Well, and again, it depends on, on how you define it, because the way you just defined it from an economic standpoint, um, you're taking a mass of society and saying, OK, within this mass, uh, when you say, for example, people aren't doing well as their parents, well, that's a percentage of the population that isn't, but some people are. On, a, on an individual level, we've got people going better and worse. When I, when I think about it, and of course these are the terms we use to define what we're saying, so this is my own view, um, I look at it from a, from a technological and, and, and building standpoint, maybe you could say. Mm -hmm. If you look at it from an economic standpoint, I don't know that we could notice any patterns over over the long haul of history ever, because those are going to vary from one individual to another. If you're taking a subset of the American middle class, for example, and measuring their upticks and downticks like a stock market, absolutely. I think you see the ups and downs then. But 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 then then you, you stop seeing the giant historical trends and now you're working, I think, within a smaller uh, 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 timeline, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. You're definitely slicing it up. But you can look at things like um, uh, infant mortality rates, for example, right? Or um, 
uh, how many uh, active years of life versus how many years in, in a nursing home sort of, you know, in the end stage. There, there are different, as you say, there are many different ways to measure these things. But I do think it's interesting that we're at this time, you know, where for the really the first time in, in recent history, I believe, in, in, the, in North America anyway, that there is this sort of the sense that the wave has crested and it's starting to uh, to recede a little bit in, in some of these measures.